All right, in this video, we're discussing a very important theorem in statistics. The theorem is the central limit theorem. Basically, here's what the theorem says. If x is not normally distributed, in other words, it does not have a bell shape, right? So the distribution of x, the distribution of these measurements is not bell shaped, but it has a mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma. The central limit theorem tells us that the distribution of the sample means, for x bars in other words, will have an approximately normal distribution, so approximately bell shaped, with a mean of mu and standard deviation of sigma divided by the square root of n, as long as n is suitably large. So what does it mean to be suitably large? We'll talk about that in a moment. But basically what we're saying is if you take a large enough sample size, right, and then you look at the distribution for x bar, it will basically follow a normal distribution. It'll be approximately normal, not precisely normal, but it'll at least be approximately normal. Now, the major point here is that normality, because that means if you're trying to figure out the probability that a sample mean will turn out a certain way, you can use the bell curve as a model for that. And that's really what makes the central limit theorem so important for us. All right, these properties here, the idea that the mean for x bar is mu and the standard deviation is sigma divided by the square root of n, that actually doesn't depend upon the central limit theorem. In other words, you don't need a large sample size for that to be true. That's just true algebraically. So Basically, for x bar, its mean is mu, the population mean, assuming x has a mean of mu, right, and a standard deviation of sigma. And that means also that, again, just algebraically, nothing to do with the sample size, x bar will always have a standard error or a standard deviation of sigma divided by the square root of n. That's always the case. So we don't need to worry about that, right? Those properties don't depend upon the sample size. However, if you want to assume the normality part of it, if you want to assume they're approximately bell-shaped, you will have to have a pretty large n. So what makes the n large enough? Let's take a look. So how large does n need to be? Well, we can reasonably assume that when n is larger than 30, the distribution of x bar is approximately normal. I say reasonably because even though that may not be true in every single distribution's case, here are a few examples that kind of illustrate the point. Here is a uniform distribution. After just a sample size of 2, it kind of starts to pull in towards the center, becomes a triangle. By 10, it's kind of mound-shaped, and by 30, it's looking great, right? Nice bell curve. The bimodal distribution, again, is another symmetric distribution. At n equals 2, it's sucking in, again, trying to get clustered towards the center. By n equals 10, it's getting closer. By n equals 30, it's a nice bell curve, right? Here is a skewed distribution. This one is less skewed, right? But it's pretty skewed. This is a highly skewed distribution. At n equals 2, it's not much of a bell curve. It still looks like a skewed distribution. At n equals 10, it still looks pretty skewed. It's looking a little less skewed. But by n equals 30, it's pretty bell-shaped. And at that point, you know, we can say, hey, that's good enough. We can approximate this distribution by the bell-shaped curve. And then we have this final case, which is just thrown in here to illustrate an important point. This curve, right, for the individual measurements is bell-shaped. When the sample size is 2, it's bell-shaped. When the sample size is 10, it's bell-shaped. When the sample size is 30, it's bell-shaped. The only thing that's happening here is that its standard error is being reduced because, remember, the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So here it's just the standard deviation. Here it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of 2, then divided by the square root of 10, and then divided by the square root of 30. So all that happens is the curve keeps getting sucked in further and further and further. It becomes, in other words, less spread out. But the key thing about this is that in each one of these cases, the curve is exactly normal. Because if the curve starts out as normal, it continues to be normal at any sample size. And that means you don't need the central limit theorem for this last row, right? So basically, if n is 2, if n is 10, if n is 15, if n is 30, if n is 4,000, it'll be normal, right? So if it starts out normal, it remains normal. It's these other cases that we need the central limit theorem for because they are not normal to start with. And so we need to have some way to assume normality. And that will turn out to be the case, for x bar at least, as long as the sample size is 30 or higher. So I put here n is larger than 30. It's kind of an arbitrary cutoff, right? So, you know, in my class at least, I will not ever make n be exactly 30. So I don't want you asking that self, yourself the question, did he say over 30 or did he say 30 or less? Or what did he say? You know, so I want you to kind of just think to yourself, over 30, large, under 30, small. Don't worry about the case where n is equal to 30. In some marginal case, of course, you could, you know, assume normality if n was 30. I guess you could also assume it wasn't normal when n was 30 to be conservative. But the general idea is that for many curves, it doesn't even take 30 for it to be approximately normal. But for other curves, it may take more than 30. So the general idea is 30 is just a reasonably good cutoff, right? So 
in most cases, 30 is going to be large enough for you to assume normality. All right, so here's a quick example to test you on the concept. In which of these scenarios below can we reasonably assume the distribution of sample means is approximately or even exactly normal? All right, so it says x has a right skewed distribution, and we'll be calculating the sample mean from a random sample of eight measurements. Can we assume that that is approximately normal or exactly normal? Well, it's a skewed distribution, so it means we're going to need a decent sample size to assume normality. And here the sample size is only eight. So I'm going to say, nope, we can't reasonably assume that that's going to be normal, right? So we looked at the case where it was left skewed, and we saw that by n equals 10, it still didn't look normal, right? So eight's probably not enough. All right, y has a left skewed distribution, and we'll be calculating the sample mean for a random sample of 50 measurements. Well, we saw that at n equals 30 for the exact left skewed distribution, that little chart we were just looking at, we saw that it did look normal even at 30, so certainly 50 would be big enough. So I think it's reasonable to assume that can be approximated by a bell curve. So we're good there, assume normality there. For W, it says it has a normal distribution, and we'll be calculating the sample mean for a random sample of just three measurements. Well, normally three would not be enough to assume normality, but since W already is a normal distribution to start with, right, so that, that variable already has a normal distribution, it doesn't matter what the sample size is. The X bar or the sample mean will be normally distributed there, right? So basically, the sample means for that scenario will have an exact normal distribution. It won't be approximately normal, it'll be actually exactly normal. And that's just because the original curve was normally distributed, so the curve for the sample means coming from that population will certainly be exactly normal. Okay, so for Y, it's approximately normal. For W, it's exactly normal. For X, it's neither, probably, right? So definitely not exactly normal and probably not a large enough sample size to assume approximate normality.